welcome to the second part on velocities of a robot in the first part we covered what jacobians are and how to find the velocities of a 2 hour robot and in the first part of this video we came across this equation right here and i promise you that in the second part we are going to dissect this equation so we are going to do that right now but before we move on to dissecting this equation as a side note just let me show you this so let's say if I have a rod which is pivoted about this point and it is moving around in a circle and I ask you what would be the velocity at the tip of this rod. So it makes a lot of sense that the velocity would be always tangential or perpendicular to the rod, right? So just keep this in mind while we deal with what this equation right here means. So in order to dissect this equation, let us first consider the case where theta 1 dot is 0. So if theta 1 dot is 0, what this means is that the link is, the robot is not moving about this point, right? So this is kind of stationary, so it is not moving about this point and all the robot is doing is it is rotating about this point, right? So it is kind of similar to what we just saw. So the robot is just moving about this point. And I have, I call this vector the A vector. And it makes sense that the velocity which is represented by the A vector is going to be perpendicular to this thing. So if I draw it out, I get this. So the velocity is going to be perpendicular to this thing given that theta 1 dot is 0. And what theta 2 dot is going to do is, all it is going to do is, it is going to scale the vector a. So if theta 2 dot is 2, the vector a would become twice in length. So it is probably going to become something similar to this. And if it is half, then it is going to shrink the vector a. That is all it is going to do. So now let us go a step further and let us say that if instead of theta 1 dot being 0, let us keep theta 2 dot as 0. So if we keep theta 2 dot as 0 and we call this part the b uh, vector, so what it would mean is that the robot is not moving about this. So it is not moving about this pivot, but it is just rotating about this pivot right here. So if it does, then we are going to get a velocity which is going to perpendicular to this. So if I draw a straight line, from the pivot it is moving about to the end effector and if I draw a velocity perpendicular to it so that is going to be my b vector and again all theta 1 dot is doing is it is just going to scale the b vector either up or down. So now we know what a vector and b vector is. Now another way to understand this is by looking at it this way that a is the direction of the velocity of end effector when the joint one is varied. So a is when this is varied, that is theta one dot is zero. And b vector is just the direction of the velocity of the end effector when joint two, which is this is varied, that is theta dot two is zero. So that is just another way of looking at it. Now let, let me see if I ask you what is going to be the velocity of the end effector when theta one dot and theta two dot are both positive one. So all you would need to do is you would need to do the metric, you would need to do the vector addition and you would end up with some, something similar to this. So here I just draw a straight line which is my velocity vector and this vector shows me the velocity when theta 1 dot is 1 and theta 2 dot is 1 2. Now if I ask what would, it, what would be the velocity if theta 1 dot is 1 and theta 2 dot is minus 1. So you are going to do something similar and you are going to get this velocity with theta 1 dot being positive 1. So this is going to be b and theta 2 dot as negative 1. So it is going to be a but in the negative direction. So we are going to get this velocity. And similarly for other values of positive and negative 1 of theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot, we are going to end up with this parallelogram with these for representing the four cases of theta 1 dot as being positive 1 and or negative 1 and theta 2 dot as being positive 1 or negative 1. And this 
parallelogram that we have is called the velocity ellipsoid, which just shows you all the possible velocities of the end effector at a particular configuration. So what configuration means is just at this particular location or this particular position of the robot. So at this particular position that is shown in the picture at this particular theta 1 and theta 2 angles, the, ve the velocity of the end effector can be anything within this velocity ellipsoid or this velocity parallelogram. So if let's say if someone w was to ask me can I get a velocity right here for the robot right here I would say yes because it lies within the velocity ellipsoid. But let's say if someone w were to ask me can I get a velocity of the robot here which would just be this one this velocity I would say no. Why? Because our motors aren't powerful enough with the motors outputting an angular velocity of positive one or negative one we can only get any value within this velocity ellipsoid. And the velocity ellipsoid also shows us that the robot can move faster in certain directions as compared to others. So if I draw the velocity of the robot here, so this vector represents how fast my robot can move in this direction. And if I draw this vector right here, so we can see that this vector, which is, which is the velocity for theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot being both positive, is greater, is bigger than the velocity vector here. So it means that for these angular velocities, my robot would move faster as compared to these angular velocities. The velocity ellipsoid depends on two factors. The first, it depends on the motors. So how powerful your motors are, the more powerful your motors are, the higher would be the angular velocities possible. And so your velocity ellipsoid would change accordingly. And second is your configuration, which is just your position of the robot or your current values of theta one and theta two in this case. Let's dive into it and see how these two change the velocity ellipsoid. So for a particular configuration of the robot, with theta 1 and theta 2 marked here, we get this velocity ellipsoid. And let's say this is for a, two motors which are capable of driving the robot at angular velocities of 1 radian per second in clockwise and anti clockwise direction. Now, if I use twice as powerful motors, so we can see that these vectors a and b are going to double in length, and my velocity ellipsoid is going to become bigger and probably twice as big. And the second thing is we have to see how the configuration is going to change the velocity ellipsoid. So for the configuration, let's say at a different configuration here, I have made the theta 2 smaller. So I can see that the velocity ellipsoid has kind of shrunk. I know the drawing isn't perfect, but you kind of get an idea that the velocity ellipsoid shrinks. And now another thing is what would happen if the theta 2 becomes zero? as shown here. So if theta 2 becomes 0, the a and the b vector lie along the same line. And so your velocity vector, it shrinks down to a single line. And this is a very interesting case. And we are going to look at this case in one of our future videos. So probably two videos down, we are going to have a look at specifically this case, what happens when the velocity ellipsoid shrinks to a single line. And what would be the implications of this? In the meanwhile, why don't you just think over it and think what would happen to the velocities? Would it be able to achieve a velocity, let's say, in this direction? So would it be able to achieve a velocity in this direction or in this direction or not? So in the next video, what we are going to cover is we are going to find the Jacobian of a 3R robot. If you remember, in the first part, we started off with this fancy robot. We converted into a 2D planar robot which was this one right here and then what we did was we simplified it further so we converted it into this 3R robot and then we simplified it further and we got to this robot and we have been dealing with this simple 2R robot ever since. In the next video we are going to go a step back and we are going to deal with this more complicated 3R robot which has got an end effector at the end with a revolute joint and we are going to find out the Jacobian for this. And a small hint, the Jacobian for this case, 
case would be a three cross three matrix. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share this video among your friends. And as always, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.